Thank you, everyone. Um, it's actually uh, a real privilege to be here, but particularly to, to follow from uh, 360 Giving, who A, are amazing and great, um, but B, uh, it's a really pertinent follow-on from, from what we're about to talk, I'm about to talk about, which is quite clearly just presenting data into an environment changes the way people interact with each other, and it makes it, uh, in more com well, I'm going to talk about being competitive for, for government money, but it actually means that you're more sensible about how you spend money. So tracking where money goes, and possibly down to the impact it has, is really, really important way uh, that we're going to have to tackle austerity. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is happening in spending and spending data and what can, what can opening up spending in a radical way, what it could do economically to benefit public services um, and actually get better, get more for less, basically. Um, the first thing is, why do people ask for data? I mean, I, I spoke to a, a group of FOI officers recently and they... And in the break, they were quite earnestly frustrated with lots of companies getting in touch with them to say, well, how do you spend your money? And, and I had to remind them that it's for this. It's because they want a better life. It's not, you know, okay, I'm going to bother you with an FOI about how you, um, uh, uh, how you spend your money because I'm a nasty business. They actually just want to get on. They want to spend less time knocking on doors of, of organizations that are contracted for 10 years when they know they're not, they can't do anything there. And they want to spend time trying to understand what you're doing now so that perhaps they can provide you something better or something more valuable or something more competitive. And actually, by making it difficult for people to get data, life is less competitive. You're going to end up spending more money. So, I'm going to talk about information asymmetry. And um, the last time I did this talk, I, I mentioned information asymmetry without mentioning why there was a lemon on the screen. So <laughs> I need to actually... Um, Joseph Stieglitz and, and some other um, economists in, in the 1970s um, did some groundbreaking analysis um, that won them the Nobel Prize, which was simply to say that in a, um, in, in, in a market, and they, uh, Joseph Stieglitz used the market of the used car market as an example, and he said that a lack of information from, on behalf of the buyer actually depresses the prices. He proved that it depresses the prices in the market, and he called this research buying a lemon. Okay, so that's why the lemon is there. Um, not a used car, <laughs> but, but the, the suppression of data and the lack of data when you come into a tender, actually kills competition. The downside for the government is that it raises prices. So information asymmetry in the public sector means we pay more. And the difficulty is, is, is simple. It's not about um, uh, goodwill on behalf of government. It's that tendering is a really crude way of exchanging information about what you want to buy. Now, I can't come up with a better way. I'm not suggesting we do something other than tendering. But there's a lot of information that we could share outside of tenders that would make life more competitive. Now, the problem with information asymmetry is that it happens at, at every stage. And you end up with the buyer perhaps presenting less information than they might like about what their service requires. And that comes back to bite them later on because it's too late to go out to tender again once you're contracted with someone. And they can sit there and go, well, you didn't tell us about this, so it's going to cost you more. And then you've got the, the supplier who will say, well, I didn't really know what was going on, but I know enough about how to make money in my business. And I know that government doesn't know enough about how we make money. So I'm just going to keep this back and I'm going to raise the prices because people don't know what it should cost. And that's particularly true of IT. And then we have the incumbent. Well, I was recently in um, uh, somewhere in the north of England. I won't say where. But they had a real problem that their um, roads contract, their, the supply for their roads contract, was uh, refusing to give them any of the data about how much, um, uh, how, how, how many repairs had been undertaken in the last 10 years. 
And they were saying, well, you can't have it because you're going to put it in your tender document. And that's proprietary data. So you would be, you would be that's anti-competitive. So what? You know, so other suppliers coming in and finding out how to, make, how to do the job that you've just done was seen as anti-competitive. Um, so the incumbents have a, have, a, have a real power position. And this is the result. You end up with consolidation towards the, towards the front end, where you end up with more and more spend going to fewer and fewer suppliers, directly in contravention of what the cabinet office and the rest of the government is trying to do. You get this sort of gravitational pull because it's really hard to determine what you want or to express what you want. And so, and the problem, so this is 2013. This is, these are the biggest suppliers in government in 2013, central and local. And, and if, I, if I click forward, you can see the paler means you'll be spending less, right? This, this paler and smaller means we're spending less. So if I go back again, you can just see that that, 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 that shift towards the big guys is part of what's happening in government. And it's a really difficult thing to overcome. This is not by intent. This is not government saying, right, we've got to spend more money with, um, with, with, with capita. Uh, you know, and, and it's more that it it's happens as part of the process because we, we make it really difficult to compete for government tenders. And the people who are good at competing for government tenders are sometimes good at delivering tenders, but not always. Sometimes they're just good at competing for tenders. So how can open data overcome this? And, and this, is, this is the Large Hadron Collider, which is a really sort of, sort of crappy illustration of a catalyst. <laughs> and, and really what we're talking about is by radically opening up data, smashing open this idea that you have to be big to win or that you have to be good at bidding to win. What about if every contract in the UK could be was had enough data around it that when you came to time to relate to, to bidding it, not only did you know when it was up for renewal, you knew what was asked of last time, what was likely to be expected this time, and how the last person did, and how much they spent, how much it cost, because then every SME, every business could compete on a basis of saying, "I'm going to do better for you." Because we trap ourselves into this idea that our procurement teams uh, are going to are the people who are going to deliver savings in our contracting. There aren't enough of them. There are so many contracts that we need much more a much more open approach to creating competition, so that people can actually save you money without even asking for it. And we want to bid on a contract that's due for renewal in March, and we want to cut. We want to do something that effectively will increase the, um, uh, the, the, the volume of what's been the work that's done sixfold and do it at about a third of the cost. Now, the only reason I know we can do that and I know what's going on is because I know someone in the Crown Commercial Service, I know the incumbent supplier, and I'm really good at knowing where all the procurement data is because that's my job. <laughs> you can't rely on every supplier being like me in order to come in and compete and say we're going to do sixfold better at a third of the cost. But I guarantee to you there are people out there who are ready to step into those shoes. So we've got to make that open. So this is where we think you should go. This is where we think everything should be linked and open and available. From right from your budget to knowing your project to knowing your tenders and then your contracts right down to the receipts. Because the receipts will tell me actually what you're getting. And if I want to know how much it costs to, fill, to, 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 um, to uh, mend a road in Bognor Regis, then it would be on the receipt. And then that's what happens. You get growth. You encourage growth. You encourage people to engage with government. It becomes easy to challenge the incumbent. And this is not just for us. This is for everyone. And I, I'm channeling Sir Tim at that point. But it's the truth. If we can open up contracts so that we can know who bought what, when, and what they require next time, when, and what was paid last time, 
we'll have a much more competitive and a much more cost-effective government. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ian. Do we have any questions? When's lunch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got a question? Uh, how that? Yeah. There. <laughs> I guess I'm just wondering what's next. Uh, do you mean for for Spend Network or you know for solving the world's problems? <laughs> um, uh, not that we're capable of that. I think I think for for Spend Network we're really interested in looking. We've been running some experiments with text mining on data, so natural language processing and what you can do with tender data, and we've found some really interesting results from that. So we're, we're really keen to be working with the Open Contracting Partnership to funnel in as much international tender data as we can into an open contracting standard and making that available to everyone. So we're really committed to making lots of, uh, uh, of tender data open. We'd really dearly love government to improve the way they handle spending data. It's a, it's a, you know, it's bordering on scandalously poor, I'm afraid, that, for example, the Cabinet Office hasn't published any spending data for over a year, despite us having to write numerous FOIs to them. It, you know, we, do the, I, I was really heartened by what Ma, Ma, Matthew Hancock said earlier around saying we're going to dog food our data, but really, to be honest, you know, if, 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 you want, if you want to ask all of government to produce this stuff, you know, you, you've got to do something with it. So there's a bit of, um, forgive the analogy of perform or get off the pot for government <laughs> around, around how they manage their open data, I think, especially spending data. Another question? Oh, we've got two more questions here, I think. I will so be brief. Yeah. I won't hold, you won't, you won't go hungry, I promise. <laughs> Hi, Margaret Hardy from Parliament. Um, very interesting on the tenders. Um, do you have any plans to do more on a true sort of transparency of the cost of projects? So I, 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 really, I really like the pyramid and how you go from the budget to the receipts. Um, the, the receipts are often for services, but enormous amounts of money go actually into yeah. the activity around delivery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Stefan... There may be some ongoing work. Yeah, well, we're doing some ongoing work uh, around how you might save um, uh, money in government without cutting services. Because we think the data that, that is out there indicates that there's lots of money to be saved in you know, different commodities. It might be uh, mobile phones or it might be construction. But the, the, the sort of way we can already look at the data indicates that there's significant savings to be made. So we're, we're doing some of that research and it will be not specific to projects. One of the biggest problems we find is that I've got a whole load of spending data and I've got a whole load of tender data. Only 30% of contracts in the UK, of tenders, have matching contract awards. So, and most of those only, it actually comes down to 1.5% of all the tenders in the UK have a contract award that tells me who won it and how much it was for. Now, I, the, so it's really difficult to do project work like that because I can't marry my spending data to my contract data. So, um, and the guys at 360 Given will know how difficult it is to push, the, you know, some person writing a document saying, we're going to do this, and actually, well, where are the transactions that match with that? So that's the, an area we're looking at as well. And actually, the, the work leading towards the, a, a, a bigger report um, is being released as a series of blogs on the ODI website. So the first one was on, um, on consultancy day yep. rates, and the second one's on uh, tender timeframes. The third is on construction projects. and. Um, yeah, we value that your feedback on those. Yeah, well. actually, I mean, so on consulting day rates, we we looked at how much it would cost if you were an SME to provide consulting, and bear in mind there's a target of 25% spend to SMEs when we did the analysis, and 8% was the margin that we identified. So you know, there's a lot that we can do. To, to yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, is it a very quick question? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah Ask it's it really quickly. Me. Speak. Speak quickly. Uh, Chirdeep Chhabra from the Digital Catapult. Uh, have you done any work around uh, the uh, data coming in from the European Union? There's yep. a lot of uh, strict oversight on, for example, grant data. 
and the follow-up around that. Uh, is there been any study around that that you've done? We, d we don't handle grant data in that we've had so much, we, oh. you know, we're, but, but, but we do handle all of the European Union tenders and we look at that and one of the, pro one of the real problems is that the, the European tender data has been uh, abject to a point of depressing. You know, so like I, I actually bought the, I'm going to be quick here, but I actually bought, um, three years ago we bought the data because it wasn't open then, and then we made it open. And the part of the reason we made it open was because it was utterly valueless. <laughs> and, you know, having paid for it, it was so poor um, the, for analysis terms. But we've improved the way we analyze it. So, yeah, we are getting on top of it. And um, I just watched this space, I think. Thanks once again, Ian.